Okay, hi guys, and welcome to the show. And today I'm very, very excited because I'm finally going to get to review this little heavenly creature. Um, I've been wanting to review it ever since it came out quite a long time ago, mainly because this Omega um, embodies the pinnacle, I mean, the very best of what this brand has to offer. So before we get into the full review of the Constellation Globemaster, uh, master chronometer from uh, Omega. Let's just quickly do the wristwatch check. I'm wearing my Navi timer. This is the manual wind Cosmonaut, of course. And I have to admit, I'm starting to really enjoy this more than my other Navi timer. Um, so much so, I'm actually considering perhaps even selling my blue one, which is really, really surprising. This um, slightly divisive way of, of, of telling time with the 24 hour dial as opposed to just you know typical 12 hours it it did take some time to get kind of acclimated to this new way of telling time but i've got to say i just love the design and look of it so much so i i, pref I think i prefer it to my other navi timer i'm not going to rush into it i mean obviously i'm just considering it you know because i am due for a bit of a purge of the collection um, so yeah, the navy timer, there we go. Anyway, now before we get into the review, I have to give a quick shout out to Moya Jewelers in Carmel, Indiana for so kindly uh, lending this watch in. They are, of course, authorized dealers for Amiga. I've personally bought and sold watches, in fact, to them uh, several times and I can wholeheartedly recommend them. Big shout out to Derek there. Let's talk about Amiga. So first, uh, I guess a little bit of history, as always, to give further context to this particular watch. The Constellation line was launched by Amiga in 1952 after a limited production of watches commemorating their centennial, which was in 1948, and that was aptly named the Century. Uh, while the Century was never intended for full production, it received such wide acclaim both for its sumptuous case design and its chronometer level accuracy that Amiga decided to launch a new line and thus the Constellation was born. Constellation was designed to be Amiga's flagship model and always a chronometer level accuracy. The first Amiga Constellation models had the bumper 364 uh, caliber movements with the distinctive diamond shaped hour markers. The Dauphin hands were of course were used up until the late 60s and perhaps the most iconic feature was this pie pan dial that gave the face an alluring uh, a three-dimensional aspect with 12 faceted sided edges. These dials were always richly adorned with a wide plethora of decorative details like various uh, styles of applied markers, differing satin brushed finishes, others had a kind of uh, sun guilloche patterns, uh, honeycomb patterns, cross-hatched dials etc etc. The lug designs also varied from curved to fancy to angular to very kind of sharp and minimalist. These factors combined very much became the definitive aesthetic language of the constellation. In the later 1950s, the movements were upgraded to the automatic 500 series and a choice of date or no date was also introduced. The constellation would go on to have a long history of dramatic changes in styles uh, as, of course, the inevitable quartz crisis hit in the 70s, some rather bizarre design choices then followed in the 80s and 90s, like, for example, the 1982 Manhattan. Uh, but most notable, we should mention the 1970 Constellation Mega Quartz, which became and still remains the only wristwatch ever to be awarded the title of Marine Chronometer. Uh, this was due to the caliber 1510 and 1516, uh, which are some of the most accurate autonomous wristwatch movements ever produced and even after 63 days of uh, really intense testing 
their mean of variation rate was no more than two thousandths of a second per day. However, one thing has always been consistent um, over the years with the constellation, and that is the emblem of the Observatory of Geneva on the back. All gold constellation models have the Observatory of Geneva hand engraved. The dial always featured a gold star highlighting the model name, constellation, and the engraving always had the observatory under a starry sky. This observatory was one of several in Europe that put watches through rigorous testing processes and accuracy standards, much more stringent, I must say, than COSC. These tests lasted between 30 to 50 days and were broken into eight categories of overall accuracy. Watches that passed this rigorous scrutiny were dubbed observatory chronometers and awarded a special certificate from the observatory testing it. The symbol is a reminder of the watch's superior engineering. The eight stars are nod to Amiga's acing at every category of the observatory accuracy tests. So fast forward to 2015 and Amiga decided to update the dated look of the Manhattan and return more to its roots, so to speak. And this is when the Globemaster was introduced. It also coincided with Amiga's little kind of uh, coaxial revolution. But it proved two things. Technically, they were now ready to show their commitment to the Metas certification process with their master chronometer's designation. And secondly, a return to a more stylish, classic look. So this is where we are now. Uh, now, this does come in, I think, about 12 variations. There are uh, differing complications. Um, you can get uh, Segna gold ones, yellow gold ones, or the two-tone models, uh, different dials. There's a version on the bracelet. This comes with a really dark, dark blue uh, leather strap with a calfskin interior and a crocodile finish. So let's get the dimensions out of the way first. Now on the website it says 39 millimeters, but in actuality it's um, just slightly a smidgen over 38. The height is 12.5. Uh, lug to lug we're looking at 45.7 and the lug width is 20 millimeters. So a really nice crowd pleaser size there. The case itself is uh, entirely stainless steel, but we do have, this is quite an interesting development, a tungsten carbide fluted bezel. A lot flatter, and I'll just bring in my uh, my wife's date just so you can see the difference, because it's it's remarkably different to the um, the fluted bezel of a uh, date just. It sits a lot flatter. Um, now this material was chosen deliberately because it is extremely scratch resistant and I think it's something that uh, <laughs> Rolex certainly should take a leaf out of Omega's book. The fluted bezel is also quite important here because as the pie pan dial obviously references the glory days of the 50s and 60s, the bezel is a nod to arguably the, the, the last great generation of constellations uh, mechanical at least, featuring the 700 series of calibers. Uh, this was in the 70s of course, uh, and then before it uh, went a little bit downhill with the introduction of the 1000 uh, series of more problematic movements, and then of course the, uh, the quartz and the big shift in change in, in style of the 80s. The case we have these beautifully satinized finishes with a high polished beveled edge that literally goes from one corner all the way to the opposite. Also the direction of the uh, brushing is very very deliberate. Um, the finishing is incredible, really sharp sharp edges, quite a flat lugs um, but I like how they've got quite substantial um, tapering on the strap to, to continue this line. Uh, look at that, it's almost like the kind of outline of a automobile, it's, it has that elegance to it. Um, really, really subtle but nicely done. As you see, we have a return to the uh, the pie pan dial, which is just stunning, uh, with what they call a sun-brushed glossy finish to that dial. The color is very kind of navy blue, but varies. Sometimes it looks a bit cobalt. Uh, depends mainly on the light. The hands are stick hands this time. We don't have the um, Dauphine hands. We have the date at the six o'clock. Framed beautifully with these little subtle steps and a black date wheel. Coaxial master chronometer and of course 
that faceted applied star. I have to say, I really appreciate the, the subtle detail in those applied markers. Do you see where they meet that final raised section of the dial? They have a very slight little kind of indentation following the 12 sides there. We have a domed scratch resistant sapphire glass with anti reflective coating of both the insides and outsides. It's done extremely well. Um, you don't even really see it's there until you see that little lip of the glass. Uh, on the back, we also have, of course, the exhibition case back um, showing off this incredible movement. I like the fact that it has actual screws for the screw down case back. And then of course you can see the medallion with the eight stars. Uh, the, the level of detail here is excellently done. I adore the, the contrast between the bead blasted background and the raised polished stars and structure. We don't have a screwed crown or any crown guards, uh, but it does have a 100 meters water resistance, which is which is pretty good, especially for this style of watch, which I, I would say is more dressy, but going, I guess, towards the more everyday style of watch. The Super Luminova is strong and responsive, uh, with it applied both to the faceted hands with the exception of the second hand which is just a, a very plain needle we have a shortened marker at the six to give a little hint of orientation the bezel sits uh, pretty much flush with the case slight indentation um, i really like the shapes they've gone for it's it's a very clean aesthetic uh, with with a, a, a slight inward facing um, step there the dial unequivocally is is the star of the show. I mean, it's it's beguiling to look at, really ravishing blue. It would be interesting to see the other colors. I also love the italicized Globe Master. Um, it adds a little bit more of that old school charm. Because of the 12 sides, it plays with the light in a f totally different way that other watches simply don't. The clean uh, white printed minute track at the extremities of the dial very simply done and there's a really wonderful sense of balance with the line of symmetry running um, vertically down the watch but despite that quite spectacular dial uh, the watch in general is rather restrained until we get to the back and then we see inside we have Amiga's crowning achievements this is the caliber 8900 so in 2007 Amiga introduced their first in-house coaxial movement family. The 850 was first re redesigned to this particular version uh, somewhat later at Baselworld 2015. The Metas testing itself is done at a purposely built facility specially developed by Amiga and it's incredibly involved. So there are eight tests in total. In fact, if you go to their website, there's a wonderful uh, graphical explanation and they run you through the entire thing. So they test things like um, magnetic exposure. They actually magnetize and demagnetize the watch. They'll test it for shock. Uh, they'll also do what they call chronometric precision day-to-day -day testing. So they'll simulate daily conditions often on the wrist in two different temperatures and including under magnetism. And this is t uh, tested to six positions where if we compare to COSC, it's only five. And this is the deviation of chronometric precision. They do a test of what they call uh, isochronism, which they'll actually put the watch to one side, let it run down uh, to test its power reserve. Uh, and this is to ensure it still keeps the right pace at low power. And finally, they also do water resistant testing and they will test it to 25% higher than the actual stated water resistance of whatever timepiece is taking the trial. It was the first of Omega's movements to meet the MATAS certification. Omega really raised the bar there. The A8900 has two barrels in series, providing an impressive 60 hour power reserve. It has a free sprung balance with a silicon balance wheel, making it resistant to magnetic fields of 15,000 gores. And like its predecessor, it operates at the 25,200 vibrations an hour rather than the more common 28,800. So we have uh, bi-directional winding. It has 39 joules. If I pull out the crown and show you in the first position, normally we'd, we'd change the date here, but if I 
wind the crown there, you'll see it changes the hour hand by the hour, and that's how you change the date. It's also bi-directional, so you can even change the date back, which is without harming the actual watch. A bit like the hour hand on my GMT watch. This was done deliberately uh, for world travelers. When you're crossing a time zone, all you have to do is pop it out and change to the desired time zone. If you pull it out all the way, you can see it is hackable. We also, if we pop it back in, we have man in wind. And I have to say, it, it, it is quite smooth. Um, it's got a really nice kind of refined feeling to it. The movement itself is wonderfully decorated with Geneva stripes or waves in an arabesque pattern. Um, so what we see here is it's almost like a spiral, which I think really accentuates the rhodium plated rotor, gives it a sense of motion, even when it's not really in motion. That superb decoration continues on the bridges and uh, instead of blued screws, we have blackened screws, which is basically just a different uh, level of heat applied to it. And of course, beating away in there, we have the coaxial escapement. So the coaxial escapement, as we've discussed many times before, was originally uh, developed by the English legendary watchmaker George Daniels back in the 70s. Omega then bought the rights and commercialized it, first introduced it to watches in the 2000s. Uh, it took a while. Firstly, it was combined with uh, just an ETA. This particular movement really brings it to that next level, completely produced in-house by Amiga. So what is the coaxial escapement? Well, it's been described as arguably one of the biggest significant horological changes since the introduction of the classic lever escapement, which, as you guys know, is in pretty much uh, every other watch. So it utilizes radial rather than the more traditional sliding friction. This significantly reduces uh, friction in general. The benefit is less servicing, greater accuracy over time, and almost eliminates the use of uh, uh, lubrication. So it's almost taken 20 years, really, to get to this particular caliber. But I think here we have it fully realized and combined with Meta's certification. Um, this is one of the most impressive automatic movements you can possibly buy on the market, especially at the price. For the strap, we have a double buttoned deployant there. Beautifully machined. I have to say, very easy to uh, operate. You just put it in the, the desired hole and close it. It's wonderfully clean, you don't have any loops or extra uh, bits and bobs, and it's curved there to match the line of your wrist. And talking of wrists, let's pop it on and see how this bad boy wears. So there we go. Now, for me, I have a six and a quarter inch wrist. It is, unfortunately, a little bit too big for me, mainly because the case is remarkably flat. It doesn't curve around the, uh, the wrist. So this really is designed for the larger wrist. However, it is very comfortable, plays with the light masterfully, of course, because of all the detail on that dial. The weight is about 95 grams. Uh, I happen to be wearing a, a blue cashmere jumper today and it uh, <laughs> complements it wonderfully. I have to say this, this uh, deployment mechanism here, although I guess fairly rudimentary, it works. I really like this. It's uh, very legible, easy to read, uh, but definitely not for the smaller wristed. So let's discuss its positives and negatives. So we'll start with the positives. It's unquestionably the greatest Amiga watch money can buy in terms of everything it offers, from the in-house technologies and innovation, uh, to the history, to the exquisite finishing, fit, quality. I don't feel they spared any expense. I think they really did try and make the best watch they could possibly do. It very much is the pinnacle of Amiga. It's also very grown up and you know, I thought about how to describe this watch. It has a stylish elegance to it that is certainly very mature. It's the choice of somebody that wants the best. I think also it's a, it's a refreshing alternative to the date just as we see here undiluted pure class it really is it's also very versatile i feel that you know if you had to just have one watch this is this is a great contender it is very kind of on the dressy side so perhaps a smooth bezel would would be a nice addition you know we get cutting edge materials cutting edge technology uh, the performance is uh, unbeatable 
especially when it comes to mechanical automatic watches. So what are the negatives? Well, I think that the size, it's a shame there wasn't a 36 millimeter option. I think while 39 millimeters is going to please a lot of wrists, uh, it certainly rules it out for me. I, it's just simply not my scale. And also, it wears a lot larger because of these non-curved lugs. I mean, obviously, there is a curve there, but if you look at the angle, it points this way. It doesn't point down. It just looks better on a larger wrist. That's undeniable. I think it also lacks a little bit of the pizzazz of the originals. I find the... Um, the hands a little bit uninspiring. I wonder what it would look like with the Dauphine hands. Perhaps that would have been too obvious. I just find the hands a little bit dull, that's all. Um, maybe that's a question of taste, but I mean, at the end of the day, this is extremely tastefully done. The price, we, we I think for the 6,900 retail price, I mean, obviously, I'm sure you can probably get them a little bit less used. At that price, you could almost by several of the original um, constellations. It, it is quite a hefty jump up. Personally, I'd rather buy an original constellation uh, and they go from anything from a thousand to two thousand and beyond. But that's about all for the negatives. I don't really find that much wrong with it. Uh, it's a certainly strong watch and that makes me wonder why isn't this watch given more praise and considered by watch enthusiasts. It has absolutely everything going for it. I really consider this the Rolex killer because with this combination of historic innovation when it comes to the mechanics, the aesthetics, the history, really does compete on every single level uh, to let's say the date just. This is the most underrated Amiga. I think when we think of Amiga, we automatically go to the Seamasters, uh, the Speedmasters, to some extent, this has been completely overshadowed. Um, so you can see why I was really looking forward to finally getting it in. An exquisite watch. I mean, it's striking without being flashy. This is everything a luxury watch should be. When something is classic, it will always be classic. I think it will still look good 10, 50, 100 years from now. And it'll be interesting to certainly to see how that coaxial escapement has uh, stood the test of time. But it doesn't just look pretty, it's a tough cookie indeed. And especially in today's world with uh, all the electronics we are exposed to constantly, even the magnets in your laptop, it's quite reassuring to have a watch with such uh, an impressive anti-magnetic resistance. I love how they've referenced the glory days of, of the constellations and yet balanced it with the modernity Ultimately, if we bring the date just in, yes, the date just is Nikon, uh, but at the end of the day, the date just, it's dime a dozen. Uh, this, you have a bit of horological history and innovation on the wrist. Yeah, sure, you have the oyster case and being the first with the automatically switching date, but that pales in comparison to um, this monster of accuracy, the pinnacle of what Amiga have to offer. So yeah, I'm gonna leave it there. Really, really enjoyed spending time with this. It's gonna go back to uh, Moyers now. So anyway, let me know your thoughts, queries, opinions, all the rest of it down below. Thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it and found it useful. And as always, guys, I will catch you in the next one. Okay, ciao. This is a public service reminder for the good gentry. Please follow us on Instagram, join the Facebook UGWC group and click on the bell to keep notified of new videos. Don't forget to keep it positive, keep it gentry, onwards and upwards. Thank you.